In this video, I'll walk through an example of integration by partial fractions. Our integral is the integral of x plus 1 over the quantity x squared minus 7x plus 12 dx. And this is kind of a mess. Right? It would be very difficult to perform this integral without the, uh, the concept of partial fractions. And the concept of partial fractions, all it is is really just rewriting this integrand as the sum of two fractions. So just like you could write uh, 7 twelfths as 3 twelfths plus 4 twelfths, um, and then you could simplify that to make it 1 fourth plus 1 third, well, that's exactly what we're going to do here. But it's a, it's a rational expression, so it takes a little bit more work than just what I did in yellow there. So here's what we're going to do. We'll say that x plus 1 over x squared minus 7x plus 12, that integrand, it equals the sum of two fractions. And I'll call the first fraction, I'll give the first fraction, a denominator of x minus 3, and the second fraction, a denominator of x minus 4. And the question is, why am I choosing these denominators? That's crazy. Well, what I did is I factored this denominator. So factoring this denominator gives us x minus 3 times the quantity x minus 4. So uh, then I could say, well, I don't know what's in the numerators. We'll just call them expressions A and B, expression A and expression B. If we were to add these, well then, of course, I would have to get a lowest common denominator, and the way I would do that is to multiply this by x minus 4 and over x minus 4, and then the other fraction, I would add or multiply by x minus 3 over x minus 3. So that would give us our lowest common denominator, our denominator of x squared minus 7x plus 12. And in the numerator then, I would have to multiply those. I would have to multiply a times x minus 4. And then I'm just adding the numerators because that's the way you add fractions. You get a common denominator and then add the numerators. And then this numerator over here is b times x minus 3. b times the quantity x minus 3. And, and what we did there in red is we, we got our common denominator of, of uh, x minus 3 times x minus 4, or x squared minus 7x plus 12. So once we have the common denominator there, we add the numerators, our, our, our new numerators, I should say, after we multiplied by the appropriate stuff in red there. And then if you add those numerators, you should, if you do a fraction correctly, just like adding three times or three plus four, you would get seven. You would get in the in this example in blue, you'll get the numerator x plus one. So we're we're on the home stretch here. That's that's really kind of the big step is just understanding what to do in the first place. You factor the denominator, make those your two denominators, the the two factors, or three or four if you have more, and then uh, multiply by the appropriate um, expression on numerator and denominator, so that you get a common denominator, and we already know what to multiply by. It's just going to be the other denominator in this case. And then multiply the a times x minus 4 and b times x minus 3 in this case, and then that equals the, the original numerator that you were given. Okay, so that's the step of what to do. Now, what do you do to, to solve for a and b? Now, this is just algebra, but, uh, but let's, let's go through it because it's not like it's the, the type of stuff that we're always doing. This is just a little nuance, I should say, here. Okay, so ax plus 4, or minus 4a plus bx minus 3b, just distributing here, equals x plus 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to group the x terms, ax plus bx. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to factor out an x um, on this step. So ax plus bx would give me 
a plus b times x, the quantity a plus b times x. So all I did is add ax plus bx, but I factored out the x so that it looks like this. And a little foreshadowing, we're going to be getting to this. So a plus b, the coefficient of x on the left-hand side, equals the coefficient on the right-hand side. Okay, let's get to the constants. Uh, we have in the constants negative 4a and negative 3b. Constants meaning uh, non-x terms. And we'll sum those, and those should equal 1. So I've got plus negative 4a minus 3b. So all of this together still equals our x plus 1, yeah, our 1x plus 1. That's the coefficient of x. So that tells us then that a plus b must equal 1. So I'll write that down, a plus b equals 1. And that also tells us that negative 4a minus 3b equals the constant term on the right-hand side. So I'll write that down, negative 4a minus 3b equals 1. They're not always going to be the same, 1. It just so happens that the coefficient of x is the same as the constant term. But those will not always be just 1 there. Uh, solving this system of equations, I don't want to run out of time in this video, so I'm, I'm going to skip the, the operation of solving a system of equations. And I'll just give it to you. a equals negative 4. And b equals 5. Okay, so that's the solution to that system of equations. And now what we can do is rewrite this integral as a sum of two integrals. Because what we did is just, uh, we just found these two fractions. We found what a and b should equal. So we have these two fractions so that we could add those and get back to our original integrand. And when you have the sum in an integral, you can just split that apart into two separate integrals. So I'll rewrite this as the integral of negative 4 over x minus 3. That's this one. dx plus the integral of 5 over x minus 4 dx. That's this one. Now, again, I don't want to run out of time here. Um, if you're not sure how to take th these integrals, uh, you can look at the video that talks about integrals or integration, integrals or antiderivatives as uh, logarithms. Antiderivatives as logarithms is actually the name of the, of the video. And, and how it works is, just a, a quick recap, we know that the if y equals um, the natural log of x, then the first derivative is 1 over x. So if you have a uh, something in the denominator, you could use u substitution then to find that it's the antiderivative of this, or the integral, is going to be the natural log of something. And you may have something else going on as well. In this case, it's a, it's a pretty straightforward one. So... I'll change colors now because I'm gonna I'm ready to write the answer. So let's go to the natural log, actually negative four times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus three plus five times the natural log of the absolute value of x minus four. plus c, plus our constant of integration. And yes, I could have added a constant of, in constant of integration on each of those integrals, but then constant plus a constant is just another constant. So there it is. We, we broke this integrand apart into two fractions, into two smaller, more manageable integrals.